Oh, it's me. I'm back again. I've got new sunglasses and everything. Actually, like the reason I have to get these is I broke my round ones because I've been living outside. And they're just not up to the task. So these are nice big frames. All right. So what we're talking about? The mark of the beast. That's my first thing. Because um, I've been riffing, thinking about it. What can it be? Um, and it's it's interesting because I mean my. My theory kind of um, pretty much puts, um, you know, Kushner as uh, as the number one suspect, you know, for the third Antichrist. Because what I think it could be, the mark of the beast, is um, a number of an address. Because if you think about it, when it was written in the Bible, you know, they they obviously was a bit confused because they said, you know, those who have wisdom calculate his number. His number is the name is the number of a man. And I just think in the modern day, if someone wants to write a letter to me, they write my name and then the number of my house and the rest of the address. So that number is associated with me. And the other thing is I, I've sort of chosen that number as well, so it hasn't been chosen for me. Um, and the reason I'm bringing that up is uh, Krishna's building 666, like works out. You know, it's just something I wanted to put out there because obviously, like Krishna's, you know, a Zionist Jew, and um, you know, it could be like on looking at the top step of like running Israel. You know, um, yeah, that's what that's what I think. It could be it could be Krishna. You know, he's got he's got the youth on his side. He's got the money, you know, and he's got the the mark the mark of the beast as well, you know. Um, so why not, you know? Uh, so I'm looking out for Krishna, sort of becoming like um, a much bigger political figure than he even is now, you know, and emerging as possibly the third Antichrist. But you know, I'd like to say that I'm not definitely saying that and I'm not, not trying to like um, stir up hatred towards him either because I don't know him personally I don't know if he's good or bad or, or what you know but I'm just saying that it kind of fits you know um, yeah another thing I want to talk about transgender and transhumanism like a couple of words that are being used a lot these days because I, I find I find a lot, um, especially women these days, they want to occupy your masculine space, you know. And I, I quite often, like if I if I meet a woman and I start to be friendly with her, it's not there's no you know it's not about mutual friendship and love. They straight away they want to occupy my masculine space, you know. And by doing that, they're also trying to undermine me as well. And uh, what they're trying to do is they're take, like, taking away my power. And I think this is to do a lot to do with transgender, you know, where you're seeing women get more masculine and they're trying to push men into the feminine, you know, but real men won't go, won't go there, you know, and they won't feel threatened, I don't think, by this, uh, by this female push to take, to take the man's power, you know. There's certainly, like, um, it hasn't succeeded so far on me, and it never will, you know, especially not now, because I'm just ready for it, you know, I'm totally ready for it. Um, yeah, it's a kind of a war of the sexes, uh, that I think, is happening, you know, and I don't know what's, what's behind it. Um, you know, I think just uh, women want, want to take more power, you know, but they don't, they don't want to earn it, but they want to let the man earn the power and then they want to take it okay um, if there's been quite a few interviews with some uh, like Zionist Jews that I've, that I've watched you know and it's obvious to me that they they are definitely playing the female role in their relationship that they're wearing clothes chosen by their by their wives you know they live in houses which are decorated by their wives they look weird. They look out of place. 
They look like they've got no power. You know? They look like sock puppets of their wives. You know, I don't know what that is about. Whether like the, the devil is living through some kind, through the female gender, you know, it could be something like that. Okay. Uh, transhumanism. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you're getting gang stalked, you know how bad this is. Uh, this idea is coming from this place. You know, I, I think like transhumanism. There could there could be there could be some good uses for it if it comes from the right place. You know, if it's coming from the elite, some new world order, and a load of Nazis, and they want to put technology in your body. It's not for your benefit, it's for theirs. You know? If we had a real, real good sort of like um, a moral leadership, you know, and they wanted to put technology in your body, it might be for good, you know. But it's not like that, is it? You know, and for me especially, I've, I, you know, I've got rid of my phone, and that I'm, I'm never going to pay any money for a phone ever again, you know. If, if, if they want me to carry a phone, you know, they can pay me and I'll probably like chuck it down the road anyway. Just take the money and throw it. Um, funnily enough, you know, since I got rid of my phone, the amount of people that ask me, have you got a phone, it's unbelievable, you know. It's like a broken record. It's, why have you got a phone? You know, get a phone, you know. And it's like, I, I mean, you know, no, I didn't need anyone's phone number until I got rid of the phone. Now, now I need a phone to like phone up all these people, you know, and they're just trying to make me get one, you know. Of course, they're still gang stalking me, but I know that it's costing them a lot more, you know. And I love that because you know what the, the Zionist Jews love the most is their stupid bloody money. So the, the more of that I can take off them, the better. And they ain't going to do nothing about it, you know. They ain't going to put a, put a phone in my pocket now. Okay. Um, yeah, the transgender thing as well. There's something else weird happening. Okay. Have a look at homosexual men. Okay, I'm not homophobic, right? Um, I've got a lot of um, good friends back from university. Um, and I've met them all through my life because I've been, you know, because I've been living in the art world, you know, art and design. You know, all my college has been art. My university has been art. I've been surrounded by... Um, you know, homosexuals a lot. Um, but the thing that I've noticed recently is they're biologically different from us, or, or straight people. They've got this. They've got this, this lisp. You know, there's something. You, you notice they these homosexuals. They almost always have this flipping um, funny way of speaking. This this lisp. You know, and that's not. That's surely that's not learnt behaviour. You know? that, why, where have they where have they learned that from? That must be that must be biological. You know, you couldn't even put it on if you wanted to, could you? Twenty four hours a day. You know, so it's just what something I want to bring I want to bring up. You know, because I'm starting to realise I think there's so many like different races on this planet. You know, I mean, there's all the RH negative factor, and then you look around and. So many of us are so different, you know. We think of ourselves as one, which we should be, but the, the diversity is massive, you know. And obviously, I'm not trying to like. Um, there's no hatred towards homosexuals about this, you know. It's just an observation that they they could be well. They are biologically different, you know. But we all know it, you know. Um, homosexuals don't choose to be gay; they are gay, you know. Um, so it's something, you know, and it's just something that I noticed about the modern world that we live in, you know. Okay, so that's me. See ya.